After getting a dozen or so hours, or so, into Days Gone, I have some initial impressions about the game. I'm not going to say they're going about it all wrong. I'll just say I don't understand some of the storytelling choices. Here are some examples of four things in Days Gone that makes me wonder, what were the developers thinking? Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, they're slowing down. Looks like they're stopping. I don't care. I don't care. Why is that a mission? What the piss? I don't care. I don't want to follow the freaking helicopter. I, why should I care about the helicopter? Why? What do I know about the history of Deacon? About his character that would make me give whoa, a whoa, damn whoa, on, about this on, stupid helicopter? It looks like they're stopping. I don't care. In the distant past, I played Dungeons & Dragons tabletop, both as a player and a GM. I learned the hard way that as a GM, you can create an incredible, detailed, and intricate story, then throw a plot hook at the players, only to have them deftly tiptoe around it and go on with what they were doing, derailing the entire story. You have to be careful to pay attention to what motivates the player and the character they've created so that they'll be interested to follow the story you've made. When you dangle that plot hook in front of them, you want to be sure they'll bite. When it works, it's something magical. When it doesn't, it's frustrating for everyone. The player needs to meet the GM halfway and find a reason to be motivated. It really helps if they tell the GM what their character's goals are ahead of time. In Days Gone, the game developers are trying to tell a story too. The difference is that I, the player, haven't created Deacon St. John, the devs did. So they have to show me what motivates him. I have to know ahead of time why I should be motivated to follow the story. Don't make me learn my motivation by following the mission objective markers. Tell me a story that makes me want to follow the objective markers. I wanted to check out the cemetery where Leon stashed the drugs long before there was a marker for it on the map. In fact, I cared more about finding Leon's stash than about the actual objective to dispose of Alvarez's corpse. Alvarez has one short scene where she says three words, but Leon has much more development and there are several scenes where the characters talk about Leon's stash. When the narrow helicopter appeared, I didn't care. I had been given no way to know why Deacon should care. Deacon went to the refugee camp west of Three Finger Jack and found the place overrun. There was no sign of Sarah, and he assumed she died. It's been two years, and he never saw anyone alive from Nero since, and never found Sarah's body. If I had known that, before the Nero helicopter showed up, I would have known why Deacon would give a damn about investigating what they were up to. Instead, this information is revealed only after checking it out. I just assumed Deacon knew for certain that Sarah was dead, because he surely would have found out after two years. After the initial cutscene, the game skips ahead two years without revealing details about what happened to the characters during that time, which would put their behavior in proper context. In a movie, it can work to withhold details about the protagonist for dramatic effect, but in a movie, the audience doesn't have agency over the actions of the protagonist. In a video game, the player needs to know the motivation of the character they're controlling, or they won't be engaged with the story. Even if you're not crazy obsessive like me about needing motivation before following the objective markers, you'll still feel like something is missing as you go through the motions of playing the game. When Deacon and Boozer were in the tunnel, and Boozer said, You're going up there again. What are you talking about? Goddamn refugee camp. You only act like this when you're thinking about going up there. Act like what? It's not your fault that she's dead. Drop it. If you'd gotten on that chopper with Sarah, all that would have changed is you'd be dead too. Look, just drop it. At that moment, they could have revealed that the place had been overrun, Deacon never found her body, and he never truly gave up hope. That's when that information could have been delivered to explain Deacon's motivation for hating Freakers, for wanting to investigate narrow checkpoints for clues, and for being very interested in checking out the narrow helicopter when it appeared. So why didn't they do it that way? By connecting the Find Leon Stash mission to the Investigate Narrow Helicopter mission, 
even though the two things are completely unrelated, it made me feel like I was on rails. If you want to bring the drugs to Copeland's camp, you have to investigate the helicopter first, because... why? The fine Leon stash mission has to happen at a certain time of day, only because the investigate narrow helicopter mission has to happen at a certain time of day. But skipping to the right time of day when reaching the cemetery was bizarre. What is happening right now? What the heck was that about? There could have been a cutscene when disposing of Alvarez's body to indicate that this took time in order to put the appearance of the helicopter at the right time of day. Or... The stash could have been buried in the cemetery, requiring a digging up the stash cutscene to pass the time, and the helicopter's appearance would have happened in the same place. That way there's a plausible reason for it to be a certain time of day, instead of breaking immersion and making time pass when you get to the cemetery for no reason at all. The second narrow helicopter encounter also had the weird time travel happen when you reached the first checkpoint. This wouldn't have been hard to fix. If they had actually started the mission at Sarah's Memorial Stone, there is a plausible explanation that time passed as Deacon was reminiscing. At least for the narrow helicopter encounters, there's a reason that these encounters needed to happen at a certain time of day. I can think of at least one other occurrence of this skipping ahead in time at the start of a cutscene where there's no conceivable reason for it to happen at all. If there's no plot critical reason that a cutscene or mission has to start at a certain time of day, why break immersion in this way? I found the conceit that the narrow team members had magical armor cringe-inducing. Imagine if real-life soldiers had this magical impervious to all forms of attack armor. They're completely immune to my attacks. Like bullets, apparently. Okay. They could have given a reason why Deacon killing the narrow people would be counterproductive and lead to mission failure, rather than making a magical plot armor excuse. This is especially strange because when Deacon confronts O'Brien later, he threatens him with a gun. Why wouldn't O'Brien be equipped with the same plot armor as the narrow people in the first encounter? So, you want to learn how to hunt? Is that what I'm hearing? I don't want to shoot a gun. It's a rifle, not a gun. I was in the 10th Mountain Cope. Don't give me any Marine Corps bullshit. Killing a buck's a little different than killing a man. Or a freak. The best way to hunt an animal is to track it. You gotta focus and see what nature's trying to tell you. If you look hard enough, you'll see the signs. The mission to go hunting with Copeland is another example of the disjointed, bizarre choices the devs have made to tell their story. This mission just shouldn't exist. There's no message from Copeland to ask Deacon to go hunting with him. There was no cutscene conversation where the idea came up. The mission marker just popped up suddenly for no reason whatsoever. The deer hunting mission plays very much like a tutorial mission, but the players already learned the tracking mechanics in the first story mission at the very beginning of the game, and Deacon already knows how to hunt, right? So where the hell did you learn to track shit anyway? Used to go elk hunting with my old man when I was a kid. Ended up tracking shit for miles. During that first story mission, you're controlling Deacon as he investigates clues and you use eagle vision to find the tracks, but it's Deacon who asked Boozer where he learned to track. I understandably got confused and thought it was the other way around. Yeah, look. Cope, Boozer and I have been hunting before. He used to go elk hunting with his old man, and yeah, he, uh, he showed me how to gut a deer. Boozer learned to track when hunting elk with his old man, not Deacon. Even though... Deacon is the one doing the tracking in the first mission. By the time the deer hunting mission comes up, the players already learned the tracking mechanics and can't help but to have killed and dressed countless animals. This means Deacon already knows how to hunt and how to track animals, and the players already learned these behavior mechanics too. The hunting with Copeland mission doesn't advance the story, it doesn't teach the player anything new, it doesn't add any character development, and it doesn't make sense for either Deacon or Copeland to want to do it. Later, there's a story mission that pops up with a description to return to the safe house to reminisce about picking lavender with Sarah. I see it. Why would Deacon suddenly be inspired to want to reminisce about that? Why would he have to return to the safe house to do it? 
the quest description makes no freaking sense. It is implying something that Deacon doesn't know yet, and there is no reason for the player to know. If it had simply said, return to the safe house to check on Boozer, that would have been a more immersive description. Deacon isn't thinking in his head, I better go back to the safe house so I can trigger a cutscene where I think about something I did with Sarah. The gameplay in Days Gone is fun. They have some interesting ideas for game mechanics, like the sentiment, trust, and credit economic system. Everything about the central motorcycle gameplay feels and sounds great. The voice acting is very good. Deacon is really likable. I like his dark, cynical attitude. But the story is delivered in an inept, awkward way that leaves me baffled. I just don't understand what the devs were thinking. It's as if they don't know what they're doing when it comes to the storytelling part of making an open-world RPG. It may be unfair to judge a game before finishing it. I still hold out hope that my final impression after the end of the story could change a lot from my initial thoughts. My journey through post-apocalyptic Oregon with Deacon St. John is just beginning. Be sure to watch my gameplay videos and follow me on this journey on Amon Chooses. Days well, gone. Let's just say, no disrespect to Boozer, but you've got a lot to learn.